Hey everyone, Aaron here, and this is part two of my top 50 favorite anime of all time. Um, real fast, if you haven't seen part one, I don't know why you're starting on part two, but I have part one, I'll put the description box below. Um, I'll put the link for it. Also, since I hit 50 subscribers, what I thought would be kind of cool is putting channels that I feel influenced me or helped me or just showed me some love recently or even when I first started. And I put them in the description, all these channels, they're fellow YouTubers, fellow friends of mine that I consider them very important to my channel. Um, check out their channels. Their channels are awesome. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you guys bad links in terms of, you know, bad YouTubers. These guys are awesome. They do slightly different stuff, all of them, and it's just fun to watch every single one. And they all have their own personalities. Check them out, okay? Show them some love. Show them the same love you've shown me if you haven't already. Anyways, let's get on to with the top 50. So now we're at 25, and 25 is Kokoro Connect. Something that I just saw several months ago that actually pushed its way on my top 50. Kokoro Connect, if you haven't seen my review for it, because I did do a review for it at request of someone that I knew that wanted me to review it, is about a group of uh, a club group that actually gets kind of given powers. I, I want to say, I don't know how to say it like the best way, but they're given powers. Not that they can control, though. They actually just kind of have to all of a sudden bends at the whims of these powers like uh, uh, changing bodies or swapping personalities etc etc it's a phenomenally well done show I think it has humor it has some dark tones to it it has a lot of mature th tones to it it's very very cool definitely check it out I mean come on it, a show that I just recently watched to end up on the top 25 to me is something interesting and it deserves it moving on to Cowboy Bebop 24 Cowboy Bebop is something that I know a lot of YouTubers or a lot of people that watch anime now will talk about and mix things. They love it, they hate it, and I think it's just depending on where you grew up in watching Cowboy Bebop. If you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop when it first came out, or you know you grew up more so watching modern anime, it might be hard to watch this because it is a kind of older style anime that has you know slower tones to it. It has animation that's a little bit weaker than most modern stuff. But I still say that if you don't give the show a chance, that's that's sad. You know, this show is awesome. It's always on my top 50 list because, honestly, I can't remove it. It's just that good of a show. You know, it has some great mature values. It has a lot of cool action. It does a kind of cowboy, western, space, pirate kind of concept that's just awesome. It's something that I know is mimicked a lot nowadays and just Cowboy Bebop will always be the quintessential example of a show that can be great. It's still great even though it's older. All right, moving on. 23, Amagi SS. I actually plan on showing why Amagi is one of my favorite anime, but more so, I just think it's the great, great concept of what an, uh, what a harem anime can actually be. Instead of, you know, all the girls flaunting with the main character, Amagi SS focuses on one girl arcs where what if the main character ended up with this girl and what if the main character ended up with that girl rather than all at the same time. I think this show is very well done it gives the, the viewer an ample opportunity to see all these possibilities without having to play a visual novel they see in an anime form and that's only a few shows ever do that and this is one of them and it does it so so well check out Amagi SS definitely worth top 25 in 22 please teach her uh, funny story when I'm actually gonna review this soon and I'll talk about it more but I, I kind of bought Please Teacher on a very kind of random note. I, I actually go into the why I bought it and where I got it from originally. But I love Please Teacher. I think it's a very funny and interesting romance story. It is the quintessential uh, kind of accidental romance where one character gets married to another girl because reasons. I won't go into spoilers and I won't go into more of that. You watch my review when it comes out soon. But I, I think Please Teacher always will hold a spot close to my heart because this is one of the first, like, I think, 100 anime I ever saw. And it's one anime that, honestly, God, I think I've seen maybe 9 or 10 times, and it doesn't get old for me. It's always got a little bit of humor, a little bit of romance. It melts the, the, the fine line between both of them so, so well. Definitely check it out if you've never seen it. 21, Orphan. I'm pretty sure most people on my list haven't seen Orphan, and that is a damn shame. If you like stuff like Slayers... You'll love Orphan. Orphan is about a main character who actually is a powerful sorcerer who kind of gets exiled from his uh, school. Not because, you know, he's doing anything wrong per se, but because they feel that he, he knows too much. And even more so, he decides to help out trying to save a girl he loved 
when she ends up accidentally transforming herself into a giant dragon using a kind of forbidden art. This show is one part action, one part comedy, and one part just amazing. I always think Orphan holds a place in my heart. I, and I'm being honest with you, the first season is amazing. The second season, which focuses solely on comedy, is garbage. I mean, I honest to God hate that show. And it's so, it's I hate to say it because it's, you know, the same characters and everything else, but having the show kind of ripped off of its romance elements and its kind of, you know, serious tones for a kind of humorous tone, it doesn't work in all shows. It, didn't, it worked in Full Metal Panic where Fumafu came out. That was awesome like that. But Orphan did not work from that. And my friend, actually, me and him binge-watched it. We just talked about this the other day. We binge-watched the show when, when I told him I had it. And he saw the huge shift in the actual show when that second season came out. And he hated it as well. He thought it was so stupid. But first season of Orphan will always be something that's just so awesome. It's old school done perfect. I really love Orphan. Check it out if you've never seen it. Number 20. Da -da -da, Canon. Canon, I think, is one of the coolest romance slash magical type stories Key's ever done. I'm not saying it's their best work. No, no, it's not their best work. But it's one of their best works. You know, Canon, to me, always holds this place in my heart because of the fact that you deal with a lot of stuff that's just very mystical and magical. But it's not done in the usual kind of ways that you see in a lot of anime. This show has its own personality. And I love the art style. I know people kind of hate it because of the Moe tones to it a lot of times. But I think it actually works for the show. And honestly, if I could say it right now, I like the English tone. I like the English dubbing a lot better than the Japanese one. But, you know, to his his own. But, awesome show. Definitely awesome. Definitely worth top 20. 19, Legend of the Legendary Heroes. I... I'm being honest with you, I've seen this show four times in the last couple of years. I love this show, I really do. You know, it's a newer show, and I think it just has so much, so much great stuff about it. It has some awesome magical scenes, uh, it has some great little kind of concepts of maybe not romance per se, but, you know, friendship and, and somewhat, somewhat romance, Not it's not overblown. Uh, what's the only thing that sucks about the show is that it ends on a very kind of cliffhanger note and it'll never be finished because, I mean, the light novel series finished a while ago, but they never finished the actual anime and I don't think they ever planned to. But what you get is this awesome 26 episodes of just pure cool, cool stuff. The main character is likable and all the side characters are all really unique and individuals, individualistic, excuse me. I love this show. Chef, definitely check it out, definitely. By the way, if I keep saying check it out, I'm being honest with you. Check out these shows. I mean, top 50. There's a reason I'm showing these guys to you. All right, number 18, The Melancholy of Harumi Suzumiya. I, I really shouldn't even have to tell everyone why this show is awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. I, I think most people by now know what this show is, and if you haven't checked it out already, that's a damn shame also. But uh, in case you don't know what it is, our main character kind of gets involved in a club where the main club leader is actually a god. And she actually has the power to bring into things into existence that she just thinks of. So she wants Esper's aliens and time travelers in her club. She gets an alien, an Esper, and a time traveler into her club. And it just, our group has to kind of deal with her crazy antics. And it's a very wonky and crazy anime, but it's so much fun. It's so comedic. I love the show. Come on, you, come on. It, it's always on everyone's top 100 list for a reason. Definitely on my top 20 for a reason. Number 17, Future Diary. Future Diary is something that when I first saw it, I was blown away by its uniqueness and its kind of originality. I mean, a show that has our main character having a, a, a cell phone that tells his own future and, you know, having to play this game where all the other people could see each other's futures and have their own special abilities in terms of how they see the future, I think is such a great idea. I don't think anything's ever really mimicked this show. And it's got such a, a, a creepy mixture of just dark romance and dark humor. You know, it's a show that when I watched it, the first time I watched it, I watched it in Japanese. And instantly when it came out in English dub, I watched it then. And when I could, I bought it, the whole series. Come on, Future Diary is a great, great show. I'm pretty sure a few of you heard of it. If you've never heard of it, definitely check it out. Number 16, Persona 4, the animation. I'm not going to say that this is a biased uh, a number because honest to god persona 4 for me is the, like one of my favorite 
games of all time. But I love the animation. I think the anime was really well done. They took what essentially is a 70 to 80 hour video game and compressed it into five hours of an anime. And they did it pretty damn well. I mean, you know, there's some stuff that they had to kind of omit for, you know, purposes of keeping the show less than, you know, so many episodes. But they don't omit from the quality of the animation. They don't omit from the quality of the voice actors. They keep almost all of them from the actual game. This show is what shows something that could be animated from an adaptation. You know, there's a lot of stuff that comes out nowadays where it's based off light novels or manga and they butcher it. This is a show that came off from a video game and it's just so well done. Number 15, Parasite the Maximum. Now, this is a show that I also recently just watched and honest to God, it shot past everything. I mean, I, I was blown away by how cool this show is, how you see a main character grow how you see the concept of, and I mean, I personally, I'm a, a, a huge fan of the movie The Thing from the, like the 70s, where that movie was amazing. I still love that movie. And I might be wrong, by the way. It might be the 80s. I, I forgot the exact date for it. But The Thing was still, to me, one of my favorite movies. And to see that kind of personified in an anime was awesome. But this anime is so, so well done. It has some great fight scenes. It has a lot of heart and emotion. And honestly, the, the tone that it sets... Is something that I've never seen in anime before where it hits the notes of growing and it hits the notes of seeing a person just deal with so much loss that it kind of breaks them but makes them stronger at the same time. Uh, right now they're dubbed, they have it dubbed and they're putting episodes out on Toonami at 1 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays to, uh, Saturday into Sunday, I should say. Definitely watch it if you're not a huge fan of Japanese uh, subs. But I, I still say I think the Japanese wins it in terms of how they talk and how everything's done in that. But that's just me. I know the anime that's on Toonami right now, even though it's at 1 o'clock in the morning and it's for mature audiences, a lot of it was cut in terms of violence and scaling. So, I mean, that kind of sucks. But still a great show. I can't wait to buy this when it comes out. I'm going to pick this up as soon as it comes out in America. Number 14, Rumbling Hearts or Kimigo no Aizen. I say that because a lot of people see this and only know it by its original name because Rumbling Hearts is what it came out in America. But unlike most, it wasn't known by that even when it came out in America. Most people view it as Kimigo no Aizen. Um, this is what I consider still what I what maybe what maybe love romance anime, and what actually got me into romance anime. Because before that, I wasn't into that kind of cat category yet. I mean, I did see other stuff, but I wasn't solely focused on that. And then when I saw this, my heart melted, and I think what shifted me was this kind of. Just seeing someone have to deal with so much loss and trying to learn from it and trying to go through the grievances of it, you know, seeing how someone else could be affected by their loss, seeing who, you know, how a love triangle could actually be developed in, in terms of an actual love triangle, not something stupid that is like in every harem. This show, if you've never seen it before, just watch it. Go watch at least the first several episodes. You'll be surprised at the first twist that happens within the first couple episodes. It's such a huge twist that it changes the whole arc of the story in less than a few episodes. I've never seen that done in any anime outside of this, at least romance-wise. Kimigo no Eyes and a Rumbling Hearts, awesome. The English dub is very bad because it was done by a very low-budget group at the time. So check out the Japanese, I would say. But come on, you have to watch this at least once. Try it. Now, number 13, the movie series Berserk. I say that because, I don't get me wrong, the anime is not bad. I, I watched the anime first, and then I watched the movies for it. But the movie series, the three movies that came out for Berserk, I still are, I still feel are the best best example of what Berserk can be. I mean, the anime was kind of campy at times. You know, it was dark. It was very violent. But the anime movies that came out were so much better. They're, they're graphically, they're a lot better. They're proved. You can see the quality. They still have a lot of the original voice actors from the anime that came out. Honestly, watch the movies. There's three of them, watch them. They're only an hour and a half each. I personally think they've trumped the anime so much. And I know it kind of seems like a little bit of a... Um, I don't want to say a, a take in this because I know it's, it's... I'm saying all three of the movies are number 13. But I consider it as a unit because it is still a whole overarching story. It's not like even though the movies are separate, they are telling one story that essentially was told in the anime from beginning to end. So... You know, forgive me if you think that this is a little cheesy putting this as a 13 by itself, but I think it fits. 
check out Berserk if you want a mature, dark, like, uh, uh, action series movie about fantasy elements. I have reviews out for all three movies out. They're, like, one of my first reviews on this channel. Uh, please watch them if you haven't, so just so you get an idea of what they are. Just be, a lot, be advised that they actually are spoilers here and there for each movie. Alright, moving on. Number 12, another. I, I already can say, I can already tell some people are going to be happy about this more than others. Another, I know, is not the best anime in terms of horror. But to me, I think it's one of the most unique horror. Because what it does is it doesn't really do the typical horror stuff. It doesn't do where, you know, oh, here's a curse and this characters are going to die from that. The curse is not fully explained until more toward the end. And when you start shaping the pieces together and you form the puzzle that this show kind of offers, it's an amazing mystery thriller that has horror elements to it. I don't think this show is solely meant to be horror. I think it's meant to be kind of a mystery thriller than more than else with, you know, psychological horror mixed into it. I'm being honest with you, I know Another has a few moments that are weak, and I know that there's one episode people hate for what it's how stupid it was in terms of actually animating it, but this show as a whole is still, I think, one of the coolest, coolest examples of horror done right. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big sucker for anything that's thriller-based in terms of using your head to actually form pieces together. I love the show, you'll like it too, trust me, check it out. Number 11 is Raza Fine. Now... Raza Fon, I think, is probably one of the coolest mecha anime out there. Not because it's got a lot of mecha anime action, but because it's not the sole focus of the show. This show focuses on characters, what it means to be a human being, what it means to kind of separate yourself from just everything in terms of what is... what is Almost like Andrew Kiter, which I, I talked about in the other Top 50. You know, this show kind of explores what it means to be a human. And... I love the way the show progresses. I still think, and I think a lot of people uh, know about the show because of the one scene, that this is one episode that has still one of the strongest, most heart-wrenching moments of any anime. I think it's on everyone's like top five scenes of any anime. It's an awesome scene. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, I'm not going to put the link in the description because I want you guys to watch this whole show. Trust me, if you watch the whole show from beginning to end, you'll see that one scene. And that one scene alone, I think makes this anime even better than it is because this anime is awesome but that scene will always like just grab me and go oh my god I can't believe there's so much emotion and so much heart to it but the, the whole show in general is awesome I'm not saying just that one scene but it is when you realize that this show has so much to offer people alright guys we're on to the top 10 alright uh, so far I hope you guys enjoyed this so far I really had fun doing this Um, I oh. Welcome to the top 10. There we go. I actually had to move my camera because the, the, the part was cut out. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Uh, I hope that no one has any gripes about my top 50. And by the way, if it looks like I'm stalling for time, I am stalling for time because I kind of want to build a suspense. You know, what does he get named as his top 10 anime? What does he have? These are in order. These are all in order. These are things that I consider my top, top 10. These are shows that I've seen a dozen times. That I've seen a lot. I've seen them both in Japanese and English. I love them. Honestly, I'm not going to say watch them. I'm just going to say this is my top 10. And, you know, I am going to tell you what my top one is. It's going to have its own section. Don't worry. Alright. So, number 10. Probably not surprising to anyone that knows me. Garen Lagan. Garen Lagan will always be in my top 10. It's never actually been moved or shifted. I still think as crazy as this anime is... This is the mecha show to watch if you're going to watch mecha shows. I don't care if you hate Gundam. I don't care if you hate Razafon, which I just talked about two seconds ago. I don't care. If you want a cool animation, a cool story, some of the coolest characters you're going to ever meet in anime, and one of the, co like, I think, quintessential manga, uh, not manga, excuse me, uh, mecha anime out there, this is where you got to go. This is the show to watch. I'm not even going to give descriptions, you know, I plan on reviewing this in, in some time in the future, but this show is phenomenal. It will always be in my top 10, bottom line. Number 9, Anohana, or I forgot the actual English term for that. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I actually forgot off the top of my head. Uh, but anyways, Anohana, I think, it is something that when I watched it, 
I was on the edge of my seat with just wondering how the story would go. This is not just a romance story. This is a, a story that kind of delves into your childhood. It, I mean, it affected me because I think I thought about the friendships that the main character has and how he had he had a lot of close friends when he was a kid and how as they got older they all broke apart only to kind of be reunited by something that's just out of their control. I think of my childhood almost from this because I think that of my friendships that I had, the few that I had when I was a kid and how we all kind of separated and went our own separate ways when we got older. This show, it will tug at your heartstrings it will make you cry. If you don't watch the last episode, you don't shed a tear. I don't know what's wrong with you. I bawled on the last episode. I was crying so hard that I, I just was sobbing. I think it's still one of the nicest examples of what emotion can be used for an anime. The animation style is amazing. The voice acting is Japanese. It's amazing. I love the show. I love the music for it. It's just awesome. Number 8, Baka the Test. Now, I know that's going to surprise people. How how did this beat Anohana? It's not that it beats Anohana in terms of, you know, concept. I just think Baka the Test was such a great and funny show. You know, a lot of anime that does comedy does it in a way that, you know, you laugh once or twice and a lot of the jokes kind of fly over you or you go, eh, that was funny, that was okay. Baka the Test is something that from beginning to end, both seasons, from beginning to end, made me laugh. Every episode had something that made me laugh hysterically. I, I remember that if I was sad or if I was depressed, I would watch a show and I would just crack up. You know, it's the... It's a harem show that's not really, per se, harem focused. I mean, there's some stuff into the harem elements, but it's a great show. It's a very great comedy show, and it's got some cool elements. You know, I love the characters. They're all very quirky and unique. And come on, I mean, you know, that's... I think that stands for something as an own, because... There's a lot of comedy anime out there that, again, doesn't have the same effect as what it's tried to be. This show is awesome. I, I will always say this is top 8. Number 7, Phantom of the Inferno. Phantom of the Inferno, or Requiem for the Phantom, whichever, depending on, because I'm thinking of the, the visual novel name for it. Requiem for the Phantom is a show that I think delves into what humanity will actually do for its own survival. You know, per, per self, um, personally, I couldn't think of the word for a second. Personally, you know, I always say this, but, uh, you know, to actually judge how you are as a character, you have to be put under stress. And that's very true. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's happened to me in my life that put me under extreme amounts of stress that you would then see what I would do, you know, how I would react. And that's how I know who I am as a person. I know wh where my courage lies and I know what my, my weaknesses are. It's because you have those moments that define you. And Phantom does this so well by having a character who has amnesia initially, who then is told, hey, kill people, otherwise you get killed. And it, it just goes into play with how far are you willing to go to keep your own life. I think this show has a lot of greatness to it. There is some weak episodes toward the last part of the series. I think they're horrible. But the show outshines them. That's how great this show is, is that for... The most of this, the episodes, except for those like two or three episodes that were really bad, they're so great on their own that this show cannot be destroyed by anything that was weak in it at any point. It's a great show. It looks at characters. It looks at growth. It looks at just what are what is what besides what it means to be a human. What does it mean to live, and what are you willing to sacrifice to live? I love this show. Definitely, check, definitely, definitely check it out. Number six is Steins Gate. Also not a surprise to a lot of people that know me. Steins Gate is awesome. I think it has a lot of heart to it. I think it's intelligent humor. It's got a lot of intelligent concepts. Um, if you're one of those people that really wants a show with a lot of meat in terms, in terms of info, this is a show to watch because it's just great in terms of everything. Plot's amazing. Characters are awesome. Uh, there's some very emotional scenes toward the end parts. The movie was okay. I didn't particularly like the movie that much. But as its own, the show is just so cool. And I still consider it number six for a reason. It's just that great of a show. Baka Monogatari. I, I've also not... If people shouldn't be surprised this is my top five. Because Baka Monogatari... And I mean like the whole series. Like the Monogatari series in general. Because I've seen the whole Monogatari series so far. It's a series that is just so cool. It's intelligent. It's got action. It knows... It knows when to use what it's using. 
you know, it has harem elements here and there, but it doesn't focus on that. It has action here and there, but it doesn't focus on that. It focuses on analyzing what characters are thinking, what characters are feeling, and just talking. There's a lot of talking in Bakumonogatari, but all that talking leads to something that I think is one of the coolest anime ever. It has some amazing animation, it has some amazing story and characters. I love this show. Top five always. I, I think when I first came out, it was on my top five immediately. Number four, Dusk Mania of Amnesia. Mania of Amnesia is something that I've seen, I think, about seven or eight times in my life. Um, I remember when I could, I bought it on Blu-ray, and I watched it again. And then, I like, several months passed, and I watched it again for the hell of it. It's only 13 episodes, but the whole concept of the ghost falling in love with the main character, it, it's reminiscent to movies that have done that in the past. But this show... I love the romance elements too. I remember also crying when I watched the end of this show. And don't, you know, I, I don't want people to think, oh, well, he, he cries at everything. No, I don't cry at everything. I cry at emotional driven, emotionally driven anime. I am a person that I show my emotions. You know, I don't show them in terms of like, I'm just quick to cry. It's not that. It's just that when I'm happy, I'm happy. When I'm sad, I'm sad. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to hide who I am as a person. And that's why with shows like this that actually talk about heartstrings and, sh and have things that give me goosebumps in terms of just phenomenal sh uh, uh, scores, because this has a great musical score for the last episode. I actually have it on my phone all the time. I listen to it on the train and, and whatever. I'm like just relaxing. It's such a great show. It just does romance so well for despite it being so odd. Because, I mean, you think of ghosts and the main character getting together when one's a human and one's a ghost. You think that's impossible. But the show does it where I almost could believe it being possible. I really could. I love this show. Definitely, definitely number four. Number three is Higurashi. Come on, Higurashi is, to me, one of the coolest anime in the world. I don't care. I don't care if you say, oh, this show is super violent or super grotesque. Higurashi is what is, I think, one of the best shows of having this concept of Groundhog's Day effect where it resets the arcs, but for a reason. You know, the arcs reset because there's actual reason for it. All the characters are all unique. The actual pacing of the show is amazing. I love Higurashi. I think I, I want to own the whole series, but it never came out in America, and it's such a shame. I f can't say how much I love this show. I've seen it so many times. Definitely check out Higurashi. You never have. Number two is Angel Beats. Angel Beats is still not my favorite key animation product, it, but I'll tell you right now, you know, my friend watched it recently, he binge watched it, and honest to God, there's a reason why Angel Beats is so high up on here, because it's a show that has both comedy and then transitions so, so fast into something that's emotionally driven, that it, I consider it like being punched in the face, where you here you are happy and, you know, having a fun show that's just about comedy and humorous concepts and such, and then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, bam, you get hit with this, you know, actual tearful, emotional story of pain and loss, of kind of perseverance, of kind of getting past your losses and becoming a stronger person and what you're willing to do for your future. Angel Beats is an amazing anime. You must watch this if you've never seen it. I don't think I've ever met someone that's not liked Angel Beats. <coughs> Excuse me. It is an awesome show. Definitely, definitely check it out. So... Can anyone figure out what my favorite anime is of all time? I know a few people already know what it is because I've spoiled it, unfortunately. But I'll, I'll give you a few seconds. Try to figure it out. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. So my favorite anime of all time is Clan Ed. <laughs> Clan Ed will always be my favorite anime of all time. It's a show I've seen, I think, maybe 12 times or 13 times in my life. Um, this is a show that has the quintessential, I think, everything in it. It has great storytelling, it has great writing, has great animation, beautiful, beautiful story. I love Clan Ed's story. I love how you go from a, a perfect slice of life show where you see a character growing, starting from high school. You see him from high school, you see him becoming a young adult, you see the struggles of being an adult, you see the struggles of parenthood, of losing a parent, of having to raise a child as a single parent. I mean, this show... It's everything. This show is everything in one box. It. I don't understand how they could do a show like this so well and take so many concepts and bundle together so perfectly. If you've never seen Clan Ed, 
or if you've only heard about it and said, oh, well, I'll put it to my side. No, no. You take whatever you're watching, put that to the back burner, watch Clan Ed. This is a show that you'll watch the first part, you'll watch the second part, and you'll be going, oh my god, where have I been my whole life? So, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I well, Let me go back so I don't give you an empty screen to look at for a couple seconds. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun actually writing it and and kind of not reviewing them but talking about them. It kind of got to relive my childhood and my kind of growth as a person. Uh, again, guys, this is because I got to 50 subscribers. I thank all of you guys. I, I really do. You know, you guys have been with me for now. It's only been a few months, but you've shown me a lot of love. You've shown me where I need to prove my stuff. You've talked about what, what I could do better. You know, you always, a lot of people, I know which ones are very with me in the comments that they always talk to me and that's why I always will support you guys the ones that supported me I will support you as much as I can if you want to you can ask me to subscribe to you I will always subscribe to you if I feel your content is good and I'll always give you the benefit of the doubt and I will look at your channel I will watch a few videos you know if I haven't subscribed to you it's because maybe your content isn't one of my cup of tea you know maybe I don't like it but that doesn't mean you're making bad content it's just not my thing but anyways guys listen Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, until our past cross again in the next review, even though this wasn't a review, I will talk to all of you later. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.